when I first read the script for it, I was like, they're making a sequel. I don't know how I feel about this. Mean Girls 2 is a garbage movie. A genuine steaming pile of unredeemable trash. I feel guilty even calling it Mean Girls 2 because it shouldn't be allowed to breathe the same air as the original Mean Girls. The original Mean Girls is an iconic teen comedy with references that will never die and I will not see its name tarnished by the beast that is its sequel. I only hate one movie as much as I hate Mean Girls 2, The Nutjob, and even then it's hard to say I hate them equally, like at least The Nutjob was garbage on its own, but Mean Girls 2 just had to spread its garbage all over the clueless of our generation. And don't you dare tell me I only hate it because it's a sequel. That may be the reason why it keeps me up at night thinking about how inferior it is to the original, but trust me, the movie is garbage all on its own. Don't believe me? Look to the 32% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. Or consider the fact that, get this, it was filmed in 20 days. 20 days. We we shot the movie in 20 days. What? Which is like, I... It's ridiculous. For filming a movie. Like, tw 20 days to shoot a movie is unheard of. What? Really? You do a commercial in 20 days. Yeah. No wonder it's straight to DVD and literally feels like you're watching a Disney Channel original movie the whole time. Anyway, the movie starts out with one of those flash forward scenes with horrible narration. You know, like, you'll never guess how I ended up here. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me start at the beginning. I don't know if I can think of any movie where this technique is actually intriguing, but it's especially annoying here because right off the bat, it's abundantly clear that you're in for a cringe fest. I'm not a person who's particularly picky about acting. Like, as long as someone's there saying the lines, I'll suspend my disbelief for the sake of enjoying the movie. But Tess from Camp Rock has the worst line delivery I've ever heard. It's hard to ignore. She quite literally sounds like 11-year-old me auditioning for the school play. But I swear, it's not like I'm selling my kidney or anything. Although that would have been less painful. Then they have the audacity to drag Lyndon Ashby into this mess. This is my dad. They have to tell us he's her dad because if they didn't, we'd assume she was just hugging up on some random older guy. It's like they think we're incapable of picking up on context clues. Why are they spoon feeding us? They don't need to spoon feed us this information. This information is very easy to understand if you pay minimal attention. She drives a Vespa, so she must be edgy and cool. Like the muscle cars who think they own the road and check out every passing vehicle. Smart cars who don't fit in. Oh. The I'm so perky I might shake off my tube top cutesy cars. It's like this scene is trying to remind you of the far superior movie you could be watching. Oh look, it's Emma from H2O. And Mina from Cory in the House and Macy from the Jonas Brothers show. I'm starting to see a pattern here. If they wanted people to take this movie seriously, they really should have dressed the plastics like how actual popular people might dress. They look like they came straight out of justice. They must only have a fan on the left side because Miss Mako Mermaid over here is the only one getting any of the air. Who was stupid enough to hit a home run with any boy willing to play. Slut shaming. Nice. Wow, look, it's Harper from Wizards of Waverly Place. You know what? I give up. It's like they really, truly couldn't be bothered to cast anyone that wasn't a spawn of childhood stardom. Like, this movie is gonna be garbage, so just throw some random recognizable faces on it and hope for the best. I mean, sure, the original movie had Lindsay Lohan, but if anything, watching this disaster unfold is reminding me how talented Lindsay Lohan actually was. Just listen to the narration of both films side by side. But my family's totally normal, except for the fact that both my parents are research zoologists and we spent the last 12 years in Africa. I had a great life, but then my mom got off her tenure at Northwestern University. So it was goodbye Africa and hello high school. Today, everything was about to change. It was my first day at North Shore High, the last stop before Carnegie Mellon University, my dream school. Say what you want about Lindsay Lohan. She's kind of whack these days, but in her heyday, she was legitimately good at what she did. I keep thinking that if the leads for Mean Girls and Mean Girls 2 were swapped, this one would be good and the original would be bad. Maybe that's just because I can't stand Tess from Camp Rock. I can't believe they got an original cast member to be in this garbage movie. 
Omex down the hall, miss. Actually, as refreshingly sexist as that is, I'm here for advanced shop. And just when a guy seems all dreamy and has eyes you can fall into. So we have to build a lame birdhouse. Um, I guess you could decorate it. He opens his mouth and sounds like an ass. So yeah, her teacher and the hot dude are sexist, but I can't help but feel like the only reason they went with this standing up to sexism storyline was to shove the idea that this girl is cool and edgy down our throats. She's like a walking embodiment of I'm not like other girls. It's irritating. Yet again, we're reminded that this is a knockoff version of one of the best comedies of all time. It might as well put text on the screen that says just go watch the real movie. This wouldn't happen in real life. Look how cool she is. Did you forget how cool she is? <gasps> oh my god. Who did that? Who said Goku Chanel? Who acts like this in real life? You know, one of the things that makes the real Mean Girls such a classic is the fact that everything is so grounded in reality. Certain things are slightly dramatic because it's a movie, but Regina George could be a real person. The drama she creates and the things she says are things real life people have done and will do. This girl, I forgot her name already, is the same as every other Queen Bee character you've ever seen. I'm constantly distracted by how outrageous she is. You know, I'll give the movie credit for one thing, this. It was Abby. Abby did it. This shot is the only thing I appreciate because the way the hand pops into frame is actually kind of humorous. But this is the only compliment I have for the movie. She just threw her dog away in case you forgot she's evil. You qualify for in-state tuition here. Oh my god. What happened to my tuition? Why doesn't she just like get student loans? That's what everyone else does. Like, I'm sorry your family can't pay for college, but welcome to the reality of most college students. There are no real tears there. You can't fool me, Tess. Mandy's was cool, but Abby's was three stories high. Mandy flaunted her store-bought peasant costume until she spotted Abby's utterly perfect hand-stitched Marie Antoinette royal gown. Hi, Mandy. Hi. My goodness, pull your shirts up. Well, that had more to do with nature. Okay, so if Harper is way cooler and richer, then why isn't she the most popular girl in school? Mandy! Oh my god! Someone has a better parking space than us. Hey babe, who snagged the plush disabled spot? I guess you're number two now. Two? Two? Let me tell you. Nobody in the history of the universe has ever been that upset to have the second closest parking spot, especially when the closest is a disabled spot. I can't even root against the villains because they're so blatantly one-dimensional. Ellie, we need a little favor. Sure. Chastity? He already said yes before he started pimping your friend out, so why? Oops. This wouldn't happen in real life part two. <laughs> Brutal. Did she just delete the photo? Usually it takes more than one click to do that. It'll ask you if you're sure and then you have to press OK and like even if she just exited out of the photo, it's kind of misleading because the scene makes it seem like she deleted the photo and I don't know, I just think this is really dumb and they don't have an understanding of technology. You know, she would have laughed, texted back, or posted a status update. <laughs> this wouldn't happen in real life part three. We've made it folks, to the beginning of the movie, again. I know we really intrigued you with this boring scene, so here's the payoff, an even longer boring scene. Oh, it wasn't a question. <laughs> Oops. Guess I answered anyway. Remember, she's cool, not like other girls, Vespa writing, edgy girl. The girl in the back of this scene, they told her to act like a regular student and she went full cartoon. Well, I've installed security cameras. Oh, I'm sure those security cameras they've put so much emphasis on won't be important later in the slightest. Okay, Abby. How are you? Oh! Wow. Bad ass. 
Oh. Okay, so I guess these characters are saying what they want the audience to be thinking, but they know we won't think that, so they enforce it with them instead. Did they think this would be as cool and funny as boob holes? Because boob holes was iconic, and you will never, ever, ever match it. You know she's in love because she smiles visibly like an idiot. You guys need anything? Some snacks? A condom? Let me know. Ugh. I think I'm supposed to care about this relationship. I think. I mean, all we've seen of them was him being a dick and her sassing him for it. Like, what happened to make her stop hating him? And why does she like him besides the fact that he's hot? Like, hello? That's right. Joe Mitchell is a virgin. <laughs> why does everyone care? Why does anyone care? Lots of people have their first kisses in high school and lots of people are virgins in high school. Joe. I'm sorry, I didn't. How did you set me up like that? So she conveniently cuts him off before he can tell her the truth because... Plot, I guess? Well, what else do we have on the Virgin Queen? Well, a 4.5 GPA, high SATs, three AP classes, and... Oh, she's applying for architecture scholarships. Her dream? Carnegie Mellon University. Since when would any document this girl could get a hold of list her dreams? She's... Never made out with anyone, ever, or this week. Is this girl supposed to be the equivalent of Karen? Because she is far less funny and remarkably less quotable. I'm just trying to say I'm sorry, okay? But at least your shirt's funny. This guy was doing favors for the plastics specifically to bully Harper earlier, and I'm supposed to ship them now, like, just because he feels bad and she thinks his shirt is funny? No. Everybody's talking about the hot new couple. Nick and I are the hottest couple in school. Not anymore. What is that? The gossip newsletter that she gets texted with? Like XOXO gossip mean girl? Ugh. They're actually wearing camo. As if that will help if Sheriff Stolinski walked in. Like he just won't see them. Ugh. Ugh. I hate this movie. I hate it so much. You can tell he's sad because he's sitting like that. You can tell she's angry because of her power stance, squinting eyes, and Arthur meme hand. You spoiled narcissistic bitch! I get legitimately shocked every time they swear, like, slow down Disney Channel, is this really appropriate? In case you forgot they're trendy and cool, they have colored hair streaks now. So just remember, like, if you forget that they're really trendy and cool and not like other girls, just look to their hair, okay? Because it's colored now. Because they're trendy. And cool. I can't tell if this movie really wants to be funny because all of its jokes fall totally flat. I mean, is the fact that he's dancing with a plant supposed to be hilarious? There's really not a punchline there. What's the joke? This is the most Disney Channel they could possibly get with their comedy. Like somebody might as well fart and then like shove a pie in someone else's face. You know, on the topic of comedy, I can't remember any quotes from this movie which is really the original's secret weapon. I mean, Mean Girls has the best quotability of just about any movie ever. From you go, Glen Coco. To that is so fat. Or <laughs> on Wednesdays we wear pink. Mean Girls is basically half the vocabulary of kids my age. Yeah, I can't remember a single line from this movie because it's unfunny garbage. You think you're so clever, but you're not. You're just using my brother to get back at me, and I'm gonna make sure that he knows that. Not everything is about you, Mandy. Especially not my love life. What happened to the subtlety of the original movie, you know? And in Girl World, all the fighting had to be sneaky. That was probably how the original movie stayed so grounded in reality. In the real world, people don't just sass each other out in the open. They pretend to like each other, gossip, and spread rumors. The only time you see people outright fight in Mean Girls is when all the girls go ballistic. And it was written that way because of Katie's association with the animal world. It was smart and everything led up to it. And everything in this movie is just so forced and we hate each other. If you and your friends walk in a line that blocks off the whole hallway, you're gonna get shoulder brushed to the side. Like, there's a scene similar to this in the original Mean Girls, but I'll show you the difference. Sure, they're walking, they're having a grand old time being the most popular girls in school, but there's other people around, you know? It's not like a movie, it's like real life. It's everything that's right about that movie and everything that's wrong about this movie. We gathered our forces. 
But as the anti-plastic grew, Mandy started recruiting for her side. This movie is really skipping over major plot points with narration. The camera. Get to class. For the love of all the sanitary, get out of there, people! Wait, did he actually just take a picture of them? What? That's absurd! I'm honestly baffled as to how they thought this was in character for the principal, and how they thought this was the least bit humorous. I feel like this is just a repeat of when that kid was dancing with the plant. I wonder how much sugar is in this. You did not just ask that. Oh, I get it. She's becoming the type of person she was fighting against from the beginning. Almost like another much better movie that does the same thing in a subtle and interesting way. I brought back the money. Ugh, what a convenient time for her to be jogging past. I wish I'd never even met you. So I guess this is supposed to be her big downfall, like when everyone started hating Katie, but I just don't feel bad for her. Because I hate her. Because from the very beginning, she was an unlikable character who clearly thought she was better than all the other girls because she drives a Vespa. You mean a real bitch! Wait! As much as we all might like that. As much as we all might like that? When did he become such a creep? Why? That's right. I challenge you. To a football game. Well, that's a strange solution. I realized a little too late that I no longer had any friends. You didn't notice you had no friends like a couple scenes ago when everyone stopped talking to you? We haven't forgiven you yet. Not even close. But we can't let you take the fall for Mandy. That's right. We've got your back. Mandy's going down. Did they script this? They all like take turns saying sentences. It's disgusting. I'm disgusted. I want something in return. I knew it. I knew we wouldn't do it for free. What do you want, Elliot? A date to the dance with Abby. So is it just one of this guy's hobbies to do techie stuff for female attention? Gross. Is everybody decent in here? I don't want a sexual harassment lawsuit again. Again? They really ruined this character, didn't they? I tried to think of something to say about this whole football montage, but it's too boring and predictable I could hardly even keep watching. I sure am glad that guy across the street is a nut job with video cameras. Wait, why are they getting arrested but Tess from Camp Rock just got expelled when they thought it was her? I'm so, like, I, what? You know, a huge reason why this movie fails in comparison to the original is apparent when you consider how different Mandy and Regina are treated in the end. Regina was always a real person. Sure, she was the villain, but in the end, Katie makes it a point to apologize to her and even gives her a part of the dance crown. Yet, Mandy barely escapes prison and is expelled from school altogether? I mean, the things she did were worse, but that's part of the problem. Everything she did was ludicrous. She's more of a supervillain than what I would consider a mean girl. What the sequel failed to understand about the original is that Mean Girls isn't about an antagonist and a protagonist. Yes, it has them, but it's supposed to show that there aren't any in real life. Anyone can fall into the trap of popularity and social standings. I mean, when you finish watching Mean Girls, you have this feeling that Regina George isn't all that bad, just another girl in high school. Mean Girls 2 went about it like they were killing off the evil queen at the end of a princess movie. Chastity finally looked up her name and joined the abstinence club. We put out and he dumped us the next day. We should have waited like you for the right guy. Yeah, no kidding. This movie really wants you to wait until marriage. Wow, the couple I didn't care about at all ended up together, yay. Sometimes it just takes a little girl drama to find out who your friends are. Way to sum up your theme in the last sentence, ew. So now that I've rewatched this entire garbage movie to take notes, I'm going to watch The Real Mean Girls to cleanse myself and be reminded what it's like to watch an actual good movie. Feel free to argue with me in the comments because nobody will agree with you. This movie is universally hated. Get on board. 